Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how to paint wet fur. So I'm dealing with black shiny wet fur in this piece and I'm going to use a small area of the dog's neck to demo how I create that texture in soft pastel. I'm using the light grey velour pastel paper for this piece and on that I'm using unison colour pastels, a black faber castell stick and a variety of pit pastel pencils. So you can see all the colours that I'm using here, but if you'd like to see the rest of this series, which I'll be releasing next month on my Patreon channel, it will also show you the colour codes as and when I'm using them in the project. And that helps you to know what colour I'm using in that exact moment, and also gives you some idea what you might substitute for. So if you like this tutorial, please do subscribe to me here on YouTube and also consider checking out my Patreon channel for the rest of this series. Enjoy this tutorial. So the first thing I come in with, layer number one, is usually my black faber castell stick if it's a black subject that I'm painting. I often pick this up first. It's a little bit harder than a lot of the soft pastels, um, a bit closer to like a crayon. In fact, I think they might be called crayons in some listings online. But it's a wonderfully dark black and it doesn't fill the paper too much at this early stage. So I'm really using that black stick because it has quite a lot of uh, sharp edges and I can get quite a precise mark when I want to. And I'm using that to map out all of those shapes and waves in the fur. In my initial sketch I did go into quite a lot of detail as there's uh, a lot of intricate areas on this piece and I wanted to make sure that I had it pretty accurately sketched to begin with. Uh, but once I come in with this black faber castell stick then I can follow those guidelines and also go into more detail mapping out each little point and starting to block in the really dark areas. But from layer number one, I'm usually trying to create the texture as well as give myself some kind of base color. And when it's a black dog, I'm not afraid to use pure black. You'll see later on that I come in with a lot more colors to break up the black, add some of the reflections and the sheen on the coat. But if I want to get that really believable depth to the fur, I find as dark a black as I can use is best. So this part takes a long time. I'm trying to keep this uh, project mostly in real time, but for areas like this, I'm going to speed up just a little bit. You can watch this entire piece in time lapse uh, much faster than this and see the entire piece come together. I have that on my YouTube channel. But for these tutorials, I like to try and keep the footage as slow as possible so that you can see exactly what I'm doing. So for the next while, just following those marks Mostly looking at my photo reference though, as I don't trust my initial sketch 100%. At this stage, I tweak things, I change proportions a little bit. And add in details that I didn't bother with in my initial sketch. Also, if you'd like to see how I produce my uh, initial sketches. I use a grid method most of the time and I have some videos also on my channel showing you how I produce a uh, line drawing using a grid and also how I transfer my drawing onto the pastel paper. Velour is a pretty different paper um, you can't sketch directly onto it very nicely. You can't rub out your lines or make mistakes. So I like to do my sketch on a piece of drawing paper and then transfer that onto the velour. Then it gives me a nice 
clean, crisp line to get started with. But for the rest of this, uh, I would have to say that my technique here is pretty much what it would be if I were using pastel matte as well. Coming in with my darkest colours first, using them to map everything out, and then working mid-tones up into my highlights. And it's really exactly the same process. I think it's possible to get even more detail on pastel matte paper, that's what I'm finding. But I pretty much just take my painting technique and transfer it over onto pastel matte when I make that change. I use it quite often these days too. And I really like both these papers. I choose them now for different reasons when I'm uh, deciding what paper to use. The main reason that I chose velour for this piece is actually the background. The background has a lot of grass and uh, water you can just see in the mid-ground area. But the foreground is a mess of tangled grass and I felt much more comfortable producing that effect on the velour. And I knew that I would be able to get enough definition on the velour to create those really uh, crisp slight waves in the hair uh, where it's been wet by the water behind. So I know a lot of people when they first try velour they find it very difficult to get fine detail and that's just why I want to leave most of my footage in real time so that you can get a sense of how long I spend on the velour uh, refining, coming back over my layers again and again it's a really multi-layered process and the main tip for working on velour is to make sure that those layers of pastel that you're putting down are nice and thin. You don't want to be too heavy handed or you'll fill that velour paper up and you'll find that a lot of dust will come off your piece at the end. So if you fill the paper too much you're going to have problems when it comes to either shipping the piece or framing the piece, you might run into problems. So main tip for using velour, make sure that your layers are nice and thin and that you rub the pastel well into the paper. Well, that's two tips. <laughs> so one, be light-handed and to uh, make sure you rub the pigment well into the paper, which I do in between most of my layers but I also do that on pastel matte as well, not as much, but I do it just more to soften my marks and start to blend everything together, soften it nicely. And it really depends what type of fur you're painting. Sometimes you need really soft, fuzzy marks. But in this case, there's a lot more definition than normal in the Labrador's coat. So I'm having to find a real contrast between the lightest areas and the darkest areas and keep all my lines nice and sharp. But at this stage on the neck I'm still just filling in, uh, sort of jumping around a bit, trying to measure everything off my uh, previous lines. It can be very daunting when you look at a large area of either curls or this type of wet fur where it's all clumped together. It almost seems like too much detail to be bothered with sometimes, but that's when I trick myself into breaking it up into little bite-sized pieces. I try not to overwhelm myself by looking at the whole thing. So I'll set myself an intention for the day this neck area was uh, probably about four hours work and as long as I know that I make good progress in a day I get the whole neck area done. I'm happy with that so I don't worry that I've got many more days of uh, that amount of work to come. So breaking it up into bite-sized pieces, that's something I'm always saying to my patrons uh, just as a way to make yourself have that extra bit of patience 
and not rush through really important parts because although I've spent a long time with just the black here, this is a really important part. I'm already getting some sense of the texture and the 3D quality of the dog and it makes life a lot easier when I come in with my colours and my highlights. I've already done a lot of the hard work at this stage. So very exciting, it's the first bit of colour. And it's not always a colour that you would expect to see uh, me using to paint a dog. It's definitely not in my animal set, but perhaps it should be because uh, it's certainly useful to have a green when you're painting animals. Often you're painting them sitting in grass, and in this case we've got a black shiny object sitting surrounded by lots of bright green grass. So it's not too surprising to see some green in the coat. And when I start to bring in some of the, the purples, I love how this green starts to give it almost like a, a shiny oil slick effect. Super shiny. So if you want to make that coat really sheen, search for some colours in there that you don't normally expect to see on an animal. Blues are always good on a black coat. Blues and purples. But you might, depending on the dog's setting, get oranges, browns, reds, all the colours in the spectrum. Just like with a white dog, you get a lot of reflection off their coats. So I've done a little bit of work to the left side of his neck. But this area that we're really going to focus on right in the middle under his ear. And this little bit of footage is actually a little bit overexposed and I've left it a, a little overexposed as it almost shows the marks that I'm making extra clear. So it's much darker in person as I'm working on it. But this lets you see all the individual marks, including those darker colours that I added into the coat. So there's a lot of purple, and you saw me adding the green. I'm using a blue fabric castell for this side of the coat. You can see in the photo reference that this side's quite muted. It doesn't have any of the brightest highlights. So although it's quite a grey day, it's hard to tell where the sunlight's really coming from. But we can sort of figure out that it's not hitting the dog from the right side of the piece. Simply because there are some of the brightest highlights on the dog over on the left. And really none of those highlight colours have reached over to this side. So I'm using the blue Faber-Castell pastel pencil just to pick out some of those finer hairs and it's just about bright enough to create the highlight colour over here. I'm leaning reasonably hard with the pastel pencil. You can see it's quite blunt so I'm not getting a super fine line. Just about the same thickness of line as I would get from a little shard of the unison pastel which you'll see soon. So don't forget at the beginning of the project I've shared those unison colour codes with you. You can see exactly what colours I used to create this. Keeping the green mostly for down that front area and then really pulling out the purples and the blues over to the right. But even at this stage, I can start to use the pastel pencils to refine the tips of each area of fur even more. 
although I use mostly the softer pastels, the points on those pencils come in so useful for when I'm doing those final layers and tweaks. But I'm always coming back in with the black. Once I add some mid-tones, I often see right away where it actually needs to be a little bit darker. So I'm constantly re-darkening certain areas. Going back through the marks that I've just made. So it's a constant to and fro. Very gradual building up of the layers. And apologies if you can hear a lot of wind in the background. I have a very powerful microphone and I live in a very windy town. And it seems to be that every day I need to do some audio recording, uh, the wind shows up. But I hope it's not too breezy in the audio. So this is one of the little shards of pastel that I mentioned. Coming up into the lighter mid-tones, not quite highlight colours. But I also need to bear in mind that my highlight colours over on this side of the dog won't be quite as bright as they are on the left side of the dog. So I'm constantly looking for the light source and saving those brightest highlights for on the appropriate side where the light's coming from. Once you start using your brightest highlights on the shadow side of the dog, then you're going to instantly lose that 3D effect. But as I said earlier, it's not always straightforward to tell which side of the dog is in shadow. So in this photo, it's a lot more subtle than if it was pure sunshine with a heavy shadow cast. That's always much easier to figure out where the light's coming from. And you can always see a bigger difference between the sunlit area and the shadow area. So I'm always advising people when they're first starting out and they're trying to work on their use of color to choose photo reference that's uh, lit with nice sunshine, that you get a, a good shadow in the piece. This kind of lighting is a lot more subtle the differences between those uh, hues from one side to the other are really subtle. So I always find this kind of lighting a little trickier to paint. So slightly brighter now as we come around the corner to where some of these wet hairs are catching the light. That's a very small piece of pastel. I love the bigger sticks of soft pastel because as I break them, or they do naturally wear down as well, but I often break them to find sharp edges and I much prefer uh, some of the pieces which are broken down like this. Some of those are actually my favorite pieces. And I'm just turning the pastel because each time you use it, you create a little edge somewhere else. And it just takes a little time to get comfortable with different shapes of pastel between your fingertips. I was very clumsy with them in the beginning. But it's simply years of using them and just getting used to the feel of that, how to aim the, the little point to where you want it. But half the battle as well is not worrying too much about getting the mark in exactly the right place. I try to get the pigment on the paper in roughly the area and the shape that I want it. And sometimes I get the mark just how I want it with the soft pastel. But I can also come back in later on with the pastel pencils and neaten what I've done. And it's good to do that on velour because it really works the pigment into the paper. And I get to create 
the really, really fine details at the end with the pastel pencils. But I do love trying to be a little bit more free with my marks and get most of what I want onto the paper using the soft pastels. I find that I can get uh, very fiddly and very into the, the minor details when I pick up the pencils. Now we've got our darkest bit of shadow probably just underneath the dog's chin. And that's really the shadow that he's casting himself from his muzzle. So you'll start to see this area that I'm working on start to pop out more than that area on the left of his neck. And that's what I want really. I've put some highlights over on the left side. But like I have done on his ear, I will go much brighter in this area. So it's just about judging each section off each other. And sometimes it's helpful to put your painting in progress into grayscale. So take a photo of it and change that photo into grayscale. And then change your reference image into grayscale. And that's a great way to compare the two. Just to take colour out of the equation for a minute and look only at the tonal values and see if there's anywhere that you've gone too bright or anywhere that's not dark enough, that's a great way that will point it out to you as soon as you look at it. Sometimes colour and the hue really confuses our sense of what's dark and what's light. So it's good to be able to separate the two. And all I'm doing when I'm looking for colours really is trying to represent the tonal value but using something other than a monochrome grey, black and white. So I'm searching for the correct tonal value but going into the, the blue part of the spectrum or the green part in this case. I've done lots of blue and green throughout this dog's coat. But in this case, it really wasn't much of a stretch of my imagination to use those colours. When I look really closely at the photo reference that I'm about to paint, I'm really searching for all of those colours and they do start to pop out at you. If you have a close look at Storm's photo reference, can't you start to see that green tint off his front? And certainly all those blue violets and lilacs seem to pop out of a black dog. So sometimes it's good to forget the subject matter that you're painting. Just forget what it is and only think about the actual colours that you're seeing. So back in with the pastel pencil. Rather than using a grey Using this blue almost matches some of those lighter tones that I was using with the unison. So it doesn't come out bright blue. Certainly not as bright as the actual pencil itself is. And using that pencil just to shape the very finest edges coming down at his front. And one tip for this kind of hair, you really want to look at where the root of the hair is coming from. And it makes sense that it would get darker as the root of the hair disappears back into the, the black area. 
you can see how much detail I can now add in around all my soft pastel marks. It helps to have that strength of pigment from the soft pastels already on the paper. And then I can drag it about a little bit with the pastel pencil or make brand new marks with the pastel pencil. They're not quite as bright as my soft pastel marks. But I find that this full spectrum of mark making is very useful when you're painting something like fur. You need so many different types of mark, different strengths and weights of mark. So I love using the combination. So definitely a long time spent on this portrait. It had very confusing grass behind the dog and the dog was covered in this type of fur. So it took me around uh, 25 or so hours in total. Just breaking that up over the space of many days. The full piece is 18 by 14 inches, so it's quite big, but much better for getting all this detail in the fur. It would be harder if I attempted this smaller, as you're obviously making it more difficult to get those small defined edges. So I really just start to tie everything together. I like when it gets to this stage, I can go around making more subtle changes. And it really is the fun part. But I gotta say, I spend most of my time in those early stages where you're dealing with the base layers and really setting the foundations for the rest of the piece. So I don't begrudge my time spent in those early parts before you've got eyes painted or any of the fun stuff. I spend a long time on those early layers as it makes life so much easier later on in the piece. And I think that's what I used to do uh, a few years ago, uh, just rushing through those first stages, looking to get the piece to a stage where it doesn't look so bad, uh, where you start to feel good about it. It was always the eagerness to get to that stage, and I don't think I placed enough importance on laying the groundwork for the rest of the piece. So another round of highlights and I've come up another few notches in tonality. I can just start to catch the center of these hairs and that automatically gives me a little bit of gradation in color across one individual hair. So I just get it in the center area and give it a little rub. You can see it looks like it's just where the light is catching the curve of the hair where it's at its highest. So I don't want my brightest highlights to go way back down into the darkness, into the root of the hair, as it's not quite so bright in there. So that's a good way to get that 3D look to curved hairs. I'm not even going right to the very tip of the hair. It's curving back into the shadow in some areas. So all the time it's just about looking where the light is hitting. 
It's my main focus when I'm looking at the photo reference. So I hope that you have enjoyed this. There's just a few moments of footage left. Again, if you'd like to see the full series, there is another two and a half hours worth of footage. And in that we take the Labrador's entire face and you see the entire build-up of his head. But in this shorter video, You've got a lot of the techniques here already. I'm trying to release as many free videos onto my YouTube channel. I always like providing some free information as I know that not everyone can afford even a small subscription. But just to say a big thanks to the guys on my Patreon channel as it's only with their support that the past year and a half I've been able to create a lot more videos like this and that means also free videos for YouTube too. So big thanks to everyone who has supported me in the last year and a half on my Patreon channel. And I'll add links to that in the description below. I'll also add links to where you can purchase all the materials that I've used in this tutorial. And I really hope that if you're faced with painting some very wet fur, that this tutorial will be of help. Just a final bit of defining with the black fabric castell pencil. And that's it, how you create wet fur in soft pastel. Thanks very much for watching and until next time, happy pastling.